evening. Hi, welcome to the video. I'm sitting on my couch, drinking tea. Slurp. And I wanted to talk about manifolds. What are manifolds? Why are they important? Uh, at least I think. Um, why are they something you want to know about? I am really interested in borderlines when something is between being one thing and becoming another um, for example in this case art um, when we talk about art and i'm generali generalizing here to keep it sort of simple uh, and not a bit too highbrow or at least not come off too snobbish uh, like an art snob <laughs> i'm not trying to be an art snob uh, but to know art, to make art, you need, uh, need, but you, you do need it uh, subcon subconsciously, even though, you know, you can train it and teach it, but you, you do need a sense. It, there has to be something in your head, otherwise it wouldn't be possible, like abstract thinking, not only for art, but also for daily life in general, abstract thinking is important and a sense of aesthetics, um, categorization, what's special, what's not, what's abundant, what's not much and picking between that, you know, having a sense of value um, and, a, yeah, and a fascination with things, that things draw your attention. Um, beyond practical things like you, you can look at a berry because you're hungry or you can look at a fish because you're hungry or you can look at a stone because it looks like it would be a good tool but looking at something because it's special not for a practical reason um, that requires yeah we still have to do a lot of research and when I say we not me I'm just a guy on this couch sitting with tea But <clears throat> researchers and anthropologists and everyone, they, you know, it's an ongoing thing. Like, when do things start? Um, dates get pushed back all the time. Um, but yeah, back to the main point. Menu parts. How do they tie in all this? I should script my videos. I didn't. Dangerous. And yeah, I have this here. This is a menu port, the one I made. Um, it's not prehistoric, it's it's one I made. Uh, and you can make one too. You probably did already, I think. Uh, hear me out. And how did I do it? Well, menu port uh, comes from Latin, from manual, uh, with your hands, manus. And portaire, moving, carrying, you know, English porter, portable, um, you know, a really good English translation of it would be would probably manually portable, many port, uh, kind of neat, but yeah, many port. So you take one thing. A thing that stands out to you that has a sense of aesthetics probably you know cultural value uh, religious value it's very far back in time we can't ask them you see this rock where you are uh, and you pick it up because it's special from all the rocks around it from all its rock friends and then you take it home and you keep it and back in those days they did everything walking you know the dog wasn't not even domesticated uh, for context the oldest one that we are quite certain is a menu port is uh, the Makapanschat kobol yes you the pronunciation hopefully uh, and that one is around three million years old uh, to put it in perspective so nothing was domesticated uh, yes there was no homo sapiens yet, probably from the top of my head, 
uh, maybe the genus Homo wasn't there. Oh, nah. The, I, it's it's. It might be even not the even the genus Homo might haven't been around yet. I'm a bit rusty on that. But yeah, you have this rock, you put it in your pocket, modern day, and then you go home, and then you have the rock. Of course, they didn't have pockets. Well. Not in the same way we did, maybe they did, we have no clothing whatsoever. But they probably just carried everything by hand or maybe in leaves or whatever. So it had to be small, you know, you cannot take a mountain home. Still difficult, but nowadays it's more possible. And yeah, and then you have this. And it's a keepsake. It's a souvenir. It's a token of having been somewhere. It's... An interesting object in itself um, and this is what I found maybe to you is completely uninteresting but still so it's this rock this really weird organic shapes almost like a stylized figure you can see the hips you can see the arms you can see the head you see another arm in a almost sort of contra, how do you say, contra postum statute. But I didn't make it. I don't think anyone else also did, nature did. But it's special, and that's why I took it home. Why I took it home. And it can be a wide range of things. Uh, many parts have been found of all kinds of things. Uh, you have the Makapanschat cobble. That's also really interesting because it has a face. Uh, research has shown it's naturally. So, really coincident. And you have more recent examples. For example, just a rock. Um, I have this as an example, a rock I found that looked interesting to me. Took home. That were deposited at the uh, top of a mountain in Bronze Age Crete. Uh, and researcher called Alan Flynn did a lot of research about that. And it was quite special because, uh, as she put it, normally they were tossed over because they're rocks, they're pebbles, they're quartz pebbles. But probably even in the Bronze Age, people used natural objects, picked them up and moved them from one location to another location. Probably in a religious context, in a cultural context, maybe, you know, <laughs> mindfulness is Bronze Age edition, who knows. But yeah, there's a lot of context we cannot ask, but a lot of questions and intriguingness. And I hope this video is somewhat, you know, followable and somewhat coherent. Um, and I'm somewhat to make, able to make a point. I have more examples uh, I'm going through. Um, just to show what it could be, because there is really a wide range of uh, finds. Uh, I have, for example, here a little trilobite fossil. Just a little trilobite fossil and probably sandstone. Uh, feels a bit sandstony. And fossils has, have been found in what looks to be a Manuport context. Uh, in Morocco, Erfoot, I think it was called the location, they found a fossilized fish that looked kind of like a, well, look at the picture, and they were found in proximity to stone tools and other signs of human activity, but apart from the fossil, there were no marine fossils nearby or available geolog... Geo geo that word. Um, so it would suggest strongly, very strongly, with evidence and, you know, reviewed and things, papers and everything, that it was moved there on purpose. We don't know why, um, but they did. And don't take this wrong, maybe, but without having a practical purpose, it seems. You know, why would you take that home? It has no practical purpose. It's not a tool. It's not food. It's not... Yeah, it's not resources. But, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, 
many parts when defined are natural objects, not man-made. Uh, they can be man-altered. And when I say man, I mean all our ancestors that were, you know, before us and did this thing. Uh, because it goes back quite a while. Um, but it could be all kinds of things. And sometimes, uh, but not always, they can be altered. So, for example, I have this rock. And I see a figure in it or something and I could know make scratches to add details and that was something that was done uh, bones for example were scratched in patterns and yeah and then it and then that's that's when it gets another border because then there's the border between a menu port and what is called portable paleo art so men found it but it's naturally made not human or man-made manufacturer and man-made manufacturer and it can be all kinds of things it can be maybe bones because and i'm talking here and just trying to think logically we do, we also take things home that decompose like flowers for example or maybe a big insect you know show your parents what insect you found with curiosity or maybe a bone. Uh, for example, I found this on the beach on the, an island in Ter Schellingen. It's probably from a seal, I think. And I found it and it was, you know, sun bleached and kept it as a keepsake, as a sou souvenir, as a menu port, maybe. Uh, in a modern context, uh, a menu port could be mistaken for a souvenir, but we, of course, don't know if they had the same thinking pattern if they did it for the same reasons that it is a souvenir for them just as much as for now we don't know at least i don't that's for sure uh, also this it's a small rock and i altered it a bit i gave it some eyes i used a stone drill just to make some little eyes because i found the shape really funny it looked a bit like a small ghost uh, but also seashells this is a nice seashell I found on a beach and took home. And yeah, we we still do it and we still alter them, for example, because I I didn't make this, but I found this painted rock. I hope it's, it catches on the camera. Um, maybe if I keep it here. Well, we'll see in post if it catches up. No, that's not going to work. But yeah, someone painted this rock and put it away. I hopefully didn't take a, now I think of it, hopefully didn't take a rock that wasn't meant to be taken, you know, like a memor memorial thing maybe. I hope not. Um, this big seashell, I also took this big seashell home. That's also a thing. And then there's also a thing that, you know, another borderline because sometimes many ports are classified as Things that can be not practical, but they still can have a function. Uh, you can still do something with it. You know, like this is a rock, so yeah, what are you going to do with it? Um, apart from hold it. And it's actually quite a funky rock, like it feels really nice in the hand to hold. But apart from that, uh, for example, they found a hematite pebble that was scraped off a lot at uh, one side and they also found traces of paint and they figured or hypothesized, hypothesized that it maybe had been used as like a stone age deep back in time crayon making art on the walls making time we don't know but hematite can be used for coloring uh, can be used for a lot of things by the way but yeah, or wood. You know, you find an interesting piece of wood. I didn't alter this. I found it this way on a beach, uh, beach walk, on a forest walk in The Hague, Netherlands, from a best mate. Um, yeah, and I found it. And I think, you know, we find non-organic or preservable manipurts, things that can be preserved with flowers. Can they also be manipurts? Like, you know, if you have some kind of cultural process and you 
pick a lot of flowers or herbs or you know things that smell nice or things that burn nice you know lavender you can use all kinds of things but those things they don't preserve so it just stays on you know probably the only evidence there is is this youtube video and i don't think that counts as evidence but Trico, my best my friend um he brought a maniport to me and gave it to me this is a piece of italian italian marble that he found um, in the region he was the marbles everywhere the literal the mountains are made from it so it's 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 everything everything is marble um yeah and he took it home and gave it to me so it was removed from his context maybe this is actually the best example because there is no there is no marmor in the netherlands there's no naturally occurring marble in the netherlands so this might be actually the best example now i think of it because this came all the way from italy someone carried this with them all the way from italy and now it's here far far removed away from its context um yeah i think that's 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 the many port that's the thing just a piece of italian marble but it's just a thing hand portable many port taken away from its context moved to a new context and because of that and because of the properties of this um it's special why we don't know but it's special and yeah as i said many ports are things that are found and taken but not things made for example this this is not a many port This is a ceramic cat I made. It's fired. And yeah. Made it from a girlfriend for an anniversary. And I made it from ceramics. And I never showed it in a video. I made it from my own clay. You know, the clay, I, I made a lot of videos back in the day of refining my own clay. And I actually made things with it, but I never showed it. I don't know why. But here is one of those things little cat i used white clay uh, to fill in the eyes in the hole i made holes in the in the shape of the cat and then i put it in clay and then i glazed it over with a very fine white clay uh, with a lot of water applied and let it dry and uh, eggshell and then yeah little thingy all right I think I've said enough. I think I've said enough. My tea is still warm, wondrously. Uh, but I think this is time to wrap up this talk. These were my notes. You know, <laughs> the rest was all from the top of my head. So I'll proof watch it. Um, if you see this video, it means it was correct enough to be uploaded. So. Have a nice day and see you in the next one. Bob, are you gonna edit the video? Or can I have my spot back? Please. Damn.